Let's talk some 49ers here on this Sunday. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you out there are having a fantastic weekend, and it's about to be the week of the 2024 NFL Draft. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're plugged into everything that we're doing because starting on Thursday, night one of the draft, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to be live for every single round, every single day, every single pick of the draft with analysis on all of the prospects that the Niners are bringing in to this organization. It's going to be a blast. Super chat giveaways, just a lot of coverage on the docket. Cannot wait for it. I hope that you're a part of it. Hit that sub button. On the show today, I want to talk about this Bill Barnwell trade idea for San Francisco, where in his mock draft, he has the Niners moving up, trading away Brandon Ayuk in a move with the Los Angeles Chargers, and then taking wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU, who a lot of people think could be the top wide receiver in this draft class to reset the wide receiver clock to a certain degree not have to pay Brandon Ayuk, and then pay Malik Neighbors a fraction of the price. It's certainly interesting in theory when you think about it, when you dissect it, when you break it down. And this is the trade idea that Bill Barnwell put together, where the Niners get the fifth overall pick in the first round, in addition to a sixth round pick, 181 overall. And then the Chargers would receive Brandon Ayuk, Pick 31 in the first round. That's the Niners' own selection this year. And then a third round pick, 94th overall. In turn, San Francisco takes Malik Neighbors out of LSU. And the thought here for the Chargers is that earlier this offseason, they reset the roster to a certain degree, especially at wide receiver. They cut Mike Williams. He signed with the Jets. They treated, traded Keenan Allen to the Chicago Bears. They restructured the contracts of Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack to get younger on the team, to have some more cat flexibility, but also they needed to free up some money because going into the new league year, they were $20 million over the salary cap threshold. And now Los Angeles, year one, Jim Harbaugh, He's put some excitement back into that fan base for the first time in a long while because the Brandon Staley experience for him as the head coach of the Chargers was just a brutal disaster. The Chargers now have $30 million in cap room, and they could use that money to get Justin Herbert a number one wide receiver in Brandon Ayuk, who's a complete player that I think Jim Harbaugh would absolutely love. And then also on top of that, if the Niners don't have the money to pay Ayuk, the Chargers do. So in trading for Ayuk, they can give him that contract extension that he is seeking, a new deal that'll give him $25 plus million per year and give Justin Herbert the best weapon I think that he's had at wide receiver since coming into the league because I do think Ayuk is better than Mike Williams and he's better than Keenan Allen. Now, of course, for the purpose of this conversation, what would this mean for the San Francisco 49ers if they believe Ayuk is too expensive or Ayuk asks out, he demands a trade, he already unfollowed the Niners on social media, then this allows the Niners to draft a Brandon Ayuk replacement, free up some money with a Brock Purdy contract extension looming next offseason because if he plays in 2024, even similar to the way that he did in 2023, he's going to be due for a massive deal because he's going to try to make up for what he's lost as he's been one of the best value deals in the NFL the last two years playing under $1 million. And Malik Neighbors would come at a snippet of the price tag of Brandon Ayuk on that new deal as a rookie. And you rebuild your offense to a certain degree to draft a player with a lot of ability. A lot of people think that Malik Neighbors might be the best wide receiver in this draft class. I think it's really close between him, Marvin Harrison Jr. I really like Roma Dunze, and I really like A.D. Mitchell as well. Your wide receiver room would become, if you make this deal, Debo Samuel, Malik Neighbors, Jawan Jennings, Ronnie Bell, Danny Gray, Chris Conley, and Trent Taylor. Why I'm skeptical of making this move, I love Ayuk. I think he's a really special player. The rapport that he's been able to build with Brock Purdy, I think has been tremendous. And you want to do everything that you can to surround your young quarterback with a grouping of weapons to allow him to continue to thrive and flourish in this league. But if you trade away Brandon Ayuk, you're trading away a sure thing for a player that has potential. 
and he's not a known commodity or a sure thing. So the Niners roster in doing this, in the Super Bowl window, I don't think it would be better. And you would be doing this move just based on not wanting to pay Brandon Ayuk. And I think that you would have to rely too heavily on a rookie at a premium position for a Niners team that has Super Bowl aspirations. Now coming up, I want to dive deep into a Malik Neighbor scouting profile because Jim Harbaugh with the Chargers now is trying to make a splash. And he's playing now and coaching in a loaded AFC West with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Denver Broncos. Like, that's a really, really good division. And making a splash for a bona fide stud in Brandon Ayuk can move the needle for this team. So if it were to happen, what type of player would the Niners be getting in Malik Neighbors? Stay tuned to find out. First, today's 49ers report. From the at-home studio is sponsored by Prize Picks, the best daily fantasy sports app in North America, the largest daily fantasy sports app in North America. They make daily fantasy sports so easy. The more or less game is going to make game day so much more fun. You pick two or more players, you choose more or less on their projected stat totals, and you can win up to 25 times your money. You can combine sports right now, like let's say Major League Baseball, and the NBA playoffs. Once the NFL comes around, you combine those picks with college football. That's a pretty damn good Saturday and Sunday in the fall. And if you use our link, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and you use the code CLNS, you get a first deposit match up to $100. Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy, all thanks to our friends at Prize Picks. Malik Neighbors. Some people make the argument he's the best wide receiver in this 2024 NFL draft class. I worry a little bit about Marvin Harrison for him just not doing anything in the pre-draft process. I never liked that. I want a guy who I know loves ball, who's not going to worry about the outside noise. I want to see you partake in the pre-draft process to see what you can bring to the table, to see the athletic testing numbers. So those are some concerns for me, but Marvin Harrison Jr. is pops. Marvin Harrison Sr. was just a dog at the NFL level you know, a Hall of Fame player, just terrific. And Malik Neighbors is looked at as like right on par with Marvin Harrison Jr., if not above him, because some people think that he's going to be the better player, if not right below. Six foot, 199 pounds. So pretty good bulk to him being six foot. What's interesting here is that Malik Neighbors is extremely young, 20 years old and seven months. So you would be getting a player who is not yet 21 years old. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school in Louisiana and put together a really impressive college career at LSU. Year one as a freshman, he plays in 11 games, started six of them, had 28 catches, 417 yards, four touchdowns, six drops, freshman All-SEC, missed two games because of a left shoulder injury, but he enrolled in May of 2021 and still was a contributor later that fall. And now he's entering the league at a young age, so he's kind of used to that, being ahead of the ball. As a sophomore, 14 games played, 11 starts. He breaks out with 72 catches, more than 1,000 yards, three touchdowns, four drops. So the drop's a little bit of an issue. And then this past year in 2023, 89 grabs, In 13 games, 13 starts, almost 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, 18 yards per catch, and five drops. All-American, first-team SEC, led the SEC in receiving. When you watch him, the way that he moves, he's a glider is how I would categorize it. Accelerates with ease. He's a downfield target on seams, corners post routes, a complete route runner in the way that Brandon Ayuk is. And some people worry about his lack of bulk and his play strength. His play strength, not to the level of Brandon Ayuk, who is really physical with how he plays, how he breaks tackles, which I think is underrated because he plays with Debo Samuel, who gets all of the credit for that, rightfully so. And the way that Ayuk is able to block. Malik Neighbors doesn't have that type of physicality to his game, but at nearly 200 pounds, I think the size is fine. 
three-year starter with a bunch of experience. I mean, he played in 38 games with 30 starts. It's not like you're getting a player who only played and contributed for one year, which is always a little bit of an issue. The acceleration, deceleration, in and out of his cuts, in and out of his routes with the footwork, I think is just really impressive as far as traits go, and he makes plays at the point of attack. So he has some strong hands to come down with the football. This is what it comes down to, really, if you want to trade away Brandon Ayuk to get that pick from the Los Angeles Chargers. Do you want to trade away a known player who's an all-pro, who you've invested in as far as his development? You should invest in him further, taking care of your own players, because these are draft success stories that you want to celebrate as an organization. And do you want to trade away Ayuk for a rookie who has potential just for financial reasons? For me... It's like you have a really good employee at your company and they really want to be there and they say they really want to be there, but they want a little bit of a pay raise because their current salary is a little bit lower than what they should be making and they've earned that new salary by exceeding expectations, by producing for your company and turning in results. And that person and that employee is great for your workforce the office culture and is a success story that you've groomed and developed within your business. But the only reason you don't want to keep that person around is just because of dollars. There are always ways to finagle the cap, pull off financial gymnastics. The salary cap is real, but it's not. And I want to hold on to Brandon Ike because I don't get rid of special players. So I'd keep him, especially given how he's meshing with your young quarterback, who you're very high on as your franchise quarterback in Brock Purdy. So wanted to break down that trade idea from Bill Barnwell of ESPN. Definitely interesting for a couple of reasons. And in the days leading up to the draft, these rumors, always very, very juicy. Hope all of you out there having a great weekend, having a great Sunday. If you're watching this on Monday, hope your week is off to a great start. Don't forget to subscribe. Our NFL draft coverage here on the show. Going to be tremendous.